Well, hello, hello, hello. Happy Thursday. And you know what, human centipede? You know what? I am never late. I don't know what you're talking about. Time is a social construct. I am never late. I always arrive right on time. It's just all you guys who are early. That's it. That's not my problem, bro. That's not my problem at all. Janet says, I wore my four w rules of the woke left t-shirt to get a passport photo today. Not very rebellious, but it made me smile. Janet, I think that is absolutely the perfect amount of rebellious. If you guys want to see what Janet is talking about, let me just show you uh, the shirt that Janet wore to uh, get her passport photo taken in because it is one of my favorites. It's one of my favorite items in the Unwoke Art Store. This is exactly the right amount of rebellious that we're looking for. This is an amazing design that was done by Bot with the four goals of the woke left, which of course we all know the four goals. Gain as much power as possible, destabilize the system, attack capitalism, usher in their Marxist utopia. And Bot made this kick-ass design that she told me I could sell in the store. And now it's being used in passport photos and other and, and for other chicanery, hopefully. So you guys can pick that up in the Unwoke Art store. If you would like, uh, if you would like that, just head over to unwokeart.com. The link is in the description below. What a great way to start off the stream. Thank you for letting me know. That design is so cool. Bot is like, Bot is so talented. 
honest to God, like, I don't know why Bot took down her merch store because, I mean, she's so she is so good. She's so good. But if she wants to give me stuff to sell, I'm cool with that, man. That's fine. That's fine. Well, guys, welcome to The Cult. The Cult is a show that I stream Monday through Friday on this here YouTube channel on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, and on Rumble, where we do deep dives into the radical, revolutionary, far left. I show you content that no one else on the internet is showing you, and that's why everyone knows that people who watch my content are years ahead of the journalists, years ahead of the commentators, years ahead of the pundit, not a single person here believes in the Gnostic sex cult. Unless, of course, it's the Gnostic sex cult that we're watching for movie night this week on Sunday. Because on Sundays in my supporter Discord, we do do movie night at 8 p.m. Because it is my month of narcissism. Because tomorrow is my birthday. We're going to talk about that in a second. During April, which is my month of narcissism, because I'm an Aries, and therefore we don't just celebrate me on my birthday, we celebrate me for an entire month, I get to pick out all the movies for movie night, because normally someone else picks them out, or there's a vote, I don't get any say in it, but this is my month, and I get to pick out all the movies, and that means I get to torture my own community by making them watch things that will scar them emotionally for the rest of their lives. And in order to facilitate that, we are watching the Gnostic sex cult that is Midsummer on Sunday at 8 p.m. in the supporter discord. If you haven't seen Midsummer, you have to see Midsummer. Midsummer is it, it really is an incredible movie. But it's also it's one of those movies that if you haven't seen it, I don't want to hear any spoilers from the people who have. If you haven't seen this movie, can I recommend alcohol or weed or something of that variety? Because, like, this movie is intense. This movie will make you go, <gasps> this movie, yeah, yeah, Midsummer is literally about a Gnostic sex cult. And so it's perfect. <laughs> but you can't quit weed before Sunday. I mean, you could, I guess, but I don't know why. I don't know why you would, but that, that's your that's your thing. So how do you get access to this amazing movie night? How do you get access to my supporter discord? The way you get access to that is by heading over to my Substack, Carlin, K-A-R-L-Y-N dot Substack dot com and signing up as a supporter for eight bucks a month, 80 bucks a year. When you do that, you can actually just head right over to this email, the Unwoke Roundup email for last week. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, all the way down to the bottom, underneath this red box, you are going to find a link to my supporter Discord where you can come and join us for movie night. You're also going to find a link to the Bitchcraft call that we're doing on Saturday at 3 p.m. before Socialism Saturday. So that's going to be fun. So, And you'll get some other perks as well. And uh, of course, you will be supporting the work I'm doing, which I do really appreciate. While you are over on my Substack, please make sure to register for a two-part event that is starting next week. We are doing another round of the How to Speak Socialist trainings. Now, if you have never been to one of my How to Speak Socialist trainings, this is going to be a live private training. It's a crash course in all of the information that we uncover in all of these socialist and Marxist trainings that we watch. And we take the best clips that explain to you explicitly what the left is doing, what the language means, not coming from me, coming from the left, so that you can hear the left directly say exactly what they're doing all in one succinct presentation. And I break it down for you. I teach you like it in plain English so that you guys can wrap your head around the language really, really quickly. We are doing next week, level one, which is our inter introductory understanding the far left course. The heavy emphasis on that is going to be understanding what the left means by capitalism and that whiteness means capitalism. I've presented this a couple times before. So if you have previously been to one of my level one trainings, you don't need to go again, but you can. It's free. If you really want to go again, you can. But everyone, and I mean everyone, needs to be signing up for the level two training because that's brand new. No one has ever seen it before. And in that one, we are going to be doing a deep dive specifically into queer Marxism, which is going to focus on abolishing the gender binary and abolishing the nuclear family, both of which are an attack ultimately on capitalism. But those are the 
two key strategies that they're using in our world today to really disrupt things. And if they get the gender binary or the nuclear family, we're done, folks. Ain't no coming back from that. So everyone should sign up for that. Both of these events are free. You can make a voluntary donation to support the work I'm doing if you want to, but you don't have to. And if you would uh, share it out with your friends, your family, post the link to the Substack, have them all sign up. If you aren't available for the live events, just sign up anyway, and the recorded event will get sent to you after the event so you can watch it when you have time. But I definitely encourage you to come to the live events. We got a live chat going during the events. You get to ask questions. I mean, the first time I ever did this training, I probably sat around for an hour after the training and just answered question after question after question after question after question. It was actually really great. So we're going to be doing that again starting next week. And then we will do uh, the level two the following week. You can sign up for that over on the Substack, which is Carlin, K-A-R-L-Y-N dot Substack dot com. Another way you can support the work I'm doing, in addition to getting the four goals of the woke left uh, shirt in the Unwoke Guard store, you can also get the the real Marxism shirt, like what I'm wearing right now. This comes in black and it comes in uh, it comes in red as well. It looks pretty badass. Those are just a couple of the designs you can get in the Unwoke Guard store over at unwokeart.com. And for a couple more days until Saturday, you can still get 25% off the limited edition April Unwoke Wiki Plague Doctor design. And that's only going to be till Saturday. The shirt is going to be in the store for the rest of the month. But the design is 25% off until Saturday um, because it's a nice little launch special. Will the recording of How to Speak Socialist be on YouTube? I don't know. We're going to have to see how it goes. Minimally, you can access it. You can always access it. But you might have to go into my private training platform to do it. So... Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to see Liquid Marble. Yes, Gloria, Bitchcraft is on Saturday. We do Bitchcraft the second Saturday of every month. That is a private Zoom where we bitch and we craft. It starts on Saturday at 3 p.m. And that information for how to join Bitchcraft is also available on my Substack. If you just go into the Unwoke Roundup email from last week, and again, scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will find the link for how to join Bitchcraft on Saturday into there. I know, Reagan, I know. I keep reminding myself to do this. I know. I did update the website, though. But I keep reminding myself to do... I like. I was like, I've reminded myself like four or five times like, you got to update the Twitter, Carlin. It's almost the middle of the month. you got to update the Twitter. I know, Reagan. Thank you. Reagan is the uh, chief organizational officer of the cult and she keeps me in line. (laughs) I appreciate the reminder. All right, guys, one more thing before we get started, and this is kind of a fun thing. So after the stream today, I'm going to be having a conversation with Adam King of The Adam King Show. It's going to be live on Rumble and on X. And I just want to let people know, because like basically what like when I end this stream, we're going to go right into his stream over there. I'm not sure exactly when that's going to be because it's going to we're going to see how long the stream goes. Um, but I am looking forward to it. I've, I've been watching his content lately. He got into he was debating Stu Peters about the red heifer stuff where basically the 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 Jews in Israel are going to be sacrificing a red heifer. And Stu Peters says they're bringing about the Antichrist. And Adam King is like, no, no, no. It's just a cleansing ritual, bro. I think the whole thing is really weird as someone who is not. I'm not a Christian or a Jew or any form of Abrahamic religion. And so I feel like I'm just, I feel like I'm watching two groups of people fighting over whether or not to kill a red cow. And I'm just like, I like steak and hamburger as much as the next person, man. I don't care if they kill a cow. Now it is a little bit, I'm going to be honest, I don't want to offend anyone, but it is a little bit morbid to me that they're doing an ancient sacrificial ritual. But (laughs) yes, Adam King is very, 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 very Jewish. (laughs) So maybe he can explain some of this stuff to us. But but I, I, yeah, yeah. Give me give me beef and capitalism. Red cow lives matter, too. (laughs) It's like I think the whole thing is hilarious because, like, first of all, Stu Peters is a toxic asshole. Stu Peters has always been a toxic asshole. And it's like how anyone can find Stu Peters credible on anything. I just so like even even if I conceptually disagree with Adam King, I just like him a lot more than I like Stu Peters. So I'm still going to take his side. And I like I don't really care if he, if, if they want to sacrifice a cow like 
live your best life, bro. Live your best life. Do your thing. Whatever. Anyway, I'm going to be chatting with him. He invited me on his show, and that's going to be happening after this stream. You can find the Rumble link pinned to the top of my YouTube. Um, he's at he's the Adam King show on Rumble. You can also watch it on his X channel. So I do hope that you guys will uh will join me for that. And I hope it'll be a great chat. And I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, that's right, Reagan. He was in the um the X space with the Daily Wire CEO with Lauren Chen. By the way, Lauren Chen. I feel like something has broken in Lauren Chen's brain. And like Lauren Chen now gives no Fs. Honest to God, Lauren Chen (laughs) is like one of the most based people on Twitter right now. And I'm living for it. I'm living for it. Um, I, I was watching an interview he did with or like a talk he did with Adam Green earlier today. And he said he was he said he's Hasidic, but he also doesn't. He's like post kind of like denomination or so. So maybe we can ask him what that means. I don't know. I don't know any of this stuff. I don't know any of this stuff. Anyway, that's going to be after the stream today. But guys, I have a question. Has anyone, let me rephrase, does anyone, does anyone remember? This is going to be like, this is going to be the most obscure reference that I've ever asked you guys. Does anyone remember when we have heard, hang on, let me take this banner off the screen. Does anyone remember when we have heard of the Mary Nardini gang? Because we have watched socialist content that mentions the Mary Nardini gang. Do you guys remember where we heard that? Does that if it I swear to God, if anyone actually gets this question right, where we heard the of the Mary Nardini gang in the in in the course of the last year, you are you've gone the extra mile, man. You guys are gonna love this. Okay, check this out. Check this out. So I have to give a shout out to Stony Baloney aka human centipede because he dm'd me this earlier and he was like maybe we should watch this towards a queerest towards the queerest insurrection and and i was like and and it and it was it was by the mary nardini gang and i was like i've heard of the mary nardini gang where have i heard of the mary nardini gang well Who remembers this? Who remembers Violet? Violet, the queerest of all socialists, in a presentation by Red Marx about Abolish the Family. This is where I heard of the Mary Nardini gang. And this is also an amazing clip where Violet well, they are autistically rocking back and forth, explains that queer is about destabilizing the system. Let's just take a walk down memory lane. And for those of you who have never met Violet before, you can meet Violet. And oh, I, t- I have a couple of super chats. I apologize, Naruto. too. Oh, actually, this is a good point. This is a good point. Hang on. Before we get to Violet, hang on. Hang on. Breaking news. I have one other thing to talk about. Naruto says, you have less than 24 hours to contribute content to Carlin's Nitwit stream. If you haven't yet, go forth and search. What Naruto is talking about is tomorrow, because it's my birthday, I am treating myself. I am treating myself to hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of being bitchy on the internet. <clears throat> there is no better way to spend an Aries birthday than being bitchy on the internet. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to start around 2 p.m. So I'm starting early and I'm just going to go as long as I go. It could be a couple hours. It could be seven hours. 
It could be 15 hours. Who the hell knows? Who knows how long I will be bitchy on the internet to celebrate my birthday. And yes, Gloria, the crown is here. The crown is waiting. The crown is sitting right on my desk per usual. And what we're going to do is I'm going to watch influencer content and I'm going to complain. And you are going to have the opportunity to submit content. If you are on Twitter, you can reply to the post that I made earlier asking for suggestions. Or you can just bring your content to the stream. And I'm going to go based on Super Chats. And if you guys want to send me Super Chats to celebrate my birthday, that'd be pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. That'd be rad. But you can also suggest content to me to watch. But let me show you what I've got picked out already because, because you guys are going to die. Okay, so... One of the things, and I think that this came from Dragon Tail. I'm not going to watch a three-hour interview with Constantine Kissin. I'll tell you that. I'm not going to watch Constantine Kissin for three hours. But Dragon Tail would like me to watch some Constantine Kissin. Because Constantine Kissin is going to save the world for liberal values. Constantine Kissin has no idea what's going on with the radical revolutionary socialists in the United States. But, and he refuses to look. And he blocked me on Twitter when I tried to show him. Even though literally all I did was say, look at this, bro. Very nicely. Blocked me on Twitter. So I think we should hear about how Constantine Kissin is going to save the world for liberal values. We're going to do that. Yeah, you can email me suggestions. Rottweiler, just email me at activelyunwoke at gmail.com. I'll put that in the chat. You can email it to me there. I also want to watch... Dave Rubin and Ben Shapiro talk about the Candace Owens things. I know this is a little bit, a little bit late, but like, I just haven't had a chance to watch this yet. And so I definitely want to watch that. But you guys, you guys are not going to believe. This might be the clip I'm most excited about. I was thinking today, I was like, what is Chrissy Mare up to? I haven't even attempted to watch Chrissy Mare in like the longest time. Because I don't think Chrissy Mare is funny. I don't think Chrissy Mare is smart. I don't think Chrissy Mare is funny. And the only and 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 Nitwits actually started to watch Chrissy Mare. The very first episode of Nitwits ever was just for me to like figure out like why do people like Chrissy Mare? Like what is this? And I watched hours and hours and hours of Chrissy Mare, and I couldn't figure it out because Chrissy Mare is not funny. So I hadn't revisited her in a while. And so I went on her YouTube channel today. Look what Chrissy Mare posted today. I feel like this was posted just for me. I feel like this is this is the universe coming together. And the stars have aligned. And God has has winked at me and said, Happy birthday, Carlin. Chrissy Mayer talking with James Lindsay about all of the things that James Lindsay held back on Joe Rogan. Happy birthday to me. So those are just some of the things we'll be watching tomorrow for my birthday extravaganza episode of Nitwits starting around 2 p.m., and I'm really looking forward to that. So thank you, Naruto, for the reminder. Let me just do this other super chat from Naruto. This is the 10th red heifer sacrifice since the time of Moses. The 10th red cow sacrifice is supposed to usher in the era of the Messiah. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing like a good ritual sacrifice to keep us on our toes. So we'll ask Adam King about that uh, in a little bit. Rottweiler, I just got your uh, suggestion. I do appreciate that. I just, I literally just saw the email pop up. You're good. All right. Now let's go back to Violet. Let's remind ourselves how we originally discovered the Mary Nardini gang. Now I'm just going to play a little bit of Violet. I don't even remember exactly what was said in this, but we'll, we'll see how this goes. If queer is not merely an identity, but as uh, the Mary Nardini gang point out, the qualitative position of opposition to presentations of stability. <gasps> Violet just defined being queer as the 
qualitative opposition to presentations of stability and is about to say, I think, a total rejection of something related to normativity. Let me turn the volume down a little bit. To be queer is opposition to the presentations of stability. What is the second goal of the woke left? Destabilize the system. I'm sorry that we're going back and listening to things a couple times, guys, but I really think that this is important because I want you to hear from their mouth what they believe. And it can get a little complicated and sometimes it can be easy to kind of like glaze over because it's boring. But that's why we go back and we listen a couple times because I really want you guys to hear and understand it. Let's listen again. the law and that involves refusing to constitute one's body as a source of labor power. As Michelle pointed out earlier, all work comes with gendered expectations. If queer is not merely an identity, but as uh, the Mary Nardini gang point out, the qualitative position of opposition to presentations of stability and a total rejection of the regime of the normal, oh. we can understand. So I'm not gonna play this whole clip, but this is how I originally heard of the Mary Nardini gang. And that's stuck in my head. For some reason, it's because I'm like a savant when it comes to socialism. There might be some things in my real life that I forget. I forget dates. I forget what day it is sometimes. I forget deadlines. I forget. There, there, there are all sorts of important things that I forget on a daily basis. But if some random socialist 10 months ago says something on the internet in a random thing that I clip, it it cements in my brain and i do, and i never forget it and then eventually when someone says to me carlin have you heard about this queerest insurrection thing from the mary nardini gang i'm like well i i haven't heard of the queerest insurrection thing but i've heard of the mary nardini gang and i know exactly where i heard of the mary nardini gang and it was from violet in a presentation that we watched from Red May that was given in 2021 that we watched like a year ago and it sucked right in and it stayed. I don't know why I'm a savant when it comes to socialism, but I am. You're all welcome. Anyway, so when when Stony Baloney sent me this earlier, I started looking it up on uh, on YouTube and like there's all sorts of like Mary Nardini gang stuff, all sorts of stuff that looks like I mean they're queer anarchists like be gay do crime that was so basically if we go into into this there is like this whole like library of content in the the anarchist library by the mary nardini gang and so maybe we should just start here and and there and when what we're going to do on youtube is just listen to some of the things that they've written because people are making audiobooks based on the mary nardini gang and so i was like okay well let's just see what this is. Maybe I can start by reading this so we can figure out who Mary Nardini was. Mary Nardini was an Italian anarchist who lived and organized in Milwaukee's Bayview neighborhood in the early 20th century. She was a revered Italian anarchist community in a revered Italian anarchist community uh, as the guiding light. I'm not going to try to pronounce any of that. The Thespians were a group of Italian anarchists who operated a space that was not unlike many contemporary info shops. Members of the group occupied themselves distributing anarchist literature, hosting discussions, and putting on anti-state and anti-church plays as fundraisers to support anarchist political prisoners. Blah, 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 blah. In 1917, Mary Nardini and a handful of other anarchists confronted Reverend Giuliani in the streets. They declared themselves anarchists and proclaimed their hatred of the state, the church, laws, and the pope. Visibly shaken, Giuliani and his band left, blah, 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 blah. Some, like, they basically were doing, they, they were doing crazy stuff in Milwaukee. 
Um, on November 24th, okay, in the aftermath, Narden, wait, maybe I should actually just read the whole thing. On September 9th, Giuliani returned again, bringing several Milwaukee police officers with them as he arrived. Mary Nardini was seen yelling into the front door of the house. Within moments, she marched out of her residence with a column of over 50 anarchists following closely behind. The police began roughing up the anarchists, resulting in several of the folks in Nardini's crew drawing their guns. Oh, they had guns? You're telling me they had guns? Wow, leftists have guns? I had no idea. <clears throat> what ensued was a shootout between the police and the anarchists that left two anarchists dead, several people wounded on both sides, and Giuliani running for his life. In the aftermath, Nardini and over a dozen other anarchists were arrested for rioting. Eleven people, including Nardini, were indicted for the incident. And though Nardini and her comrades were in police custody at the time of the and then there was some explosion that killed a lot of people. And uh, Mary Nardini went to jail for the rest of their life. That is who Mary Nardini was. Essentially. A crazy anarchist that was you know, pushing back against the police because, of course, abolishing the police is one of the main things that socialists want to do. Anyway, there's all sorts of this stuff written by the Mary Nardini gang. And so I thought that maybe we could just take some time to listen to it and learn a little bit more about what they mean when they say towards the queerest insurrection. And so this isn't going to be this is not going to be a video. This is going to be an audio book, but it's still going to be good. Graybeard, I want no more fucking arguing about the Jews. I want nothing more about the Jews in the chat. The reason that we do not do this is when you assholes come into the chat and make it all about the Jews, 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 the Jews. The Jews, the Jews. No one else pays attention to what we're actually talking about. You will not distract in my chat if you want to be here to listen to the mary nardini gang you can be here but if all you're going to do is bitch and complain about the jews 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 take it somewhere else bro take it somewhere else we're not doing that right now all right so we're going to listen to some of these audiobooks and we're going to learn what they mean and they're relatively short like, this one is, like, 18 minutes long. Well, I guess this, I don't know, is, is this, like, the full audiobook? I don't understand this. This one's 18 minutes. This one's 30 minutes. We've got the interview with the Mary Nardini gang. Hello, communist. Have you ever heard of the Mary Nardini gang? Do you guys talk about them? Oh, by the way, um, I'm going to be interviewing two communists on Hitler's birthday for Socialism Saturday from the Revolutionary Communists of America, we've agreed in principle that it's going to take place on Hitler's birthday. I think it was very stunning and brave of the communists in the Revolutionary Communists of America party to choose Hitler's birthday as the day that they were going to come on Socialism Saturday. But I didn't, I, I just said, what Saturday do you want to come on? And they said, April 20th, which is Hitler's birthday, the universe. Winking again. Anyway, anyway, so maybe we can start here with this queerest insurrection thing and we'll see how this goes. Hang on. Let me, is the sound up? Nope, sound's not working. But to do. My name is Justin Prevot and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I make audiobooks of Marxist slash radical readings. Please hit that like and or subscribe button as I will be doing more of these in the future. Toward the Queerest Insurrection by the Mary Nardini Gang, a radical reprint. Originally printed clandestinely by the Mary Nardini Gang, criminal queers from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Now reprinted somewhat clandestinely by radical reprints. A loose not-for-profit group making theory accessible from 
Nunya Bidness. Anti copyright 2014 blah, through blah, 2021. Blah, 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 blah. No rights by blah, 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 blah. This reading falls short. While those who would fit within the constructions of quote L unquote, quote G unquote, quote B unquote, or quote T unquote, could fall within the discursive limits of queer. Queer is not a stable area to inhabit. Queer is not merely another identity that can be tacked into a list of neat social oh. categories. Wait, hang on. I was being I was being uppity and I fast forwarded too much. We need to listen to that again. Anonymous with quote. Hitler is a Taurus, guys. Hitler's not an Aries. Hitler is a Taurus. He's right on the cusp of Aries and Taurus. And that means that he probably had attributes of both. Hitler is a Taurus. Quote, gay and lesbian, unquote, or, quote, LGBT, unquote. This reading falls short. While those who would fit within the constructions of, quote, L, unquote, quote, G, unquote, quote, B, unquote, or, quote, T, unquote, could fall within the discursive limits of queer Queer is not a stable area to inhabit. Queer is not merely another identity that can be tacked into a list of neat social categories, nor the quantitative sum of our identities. Rather, it is the qualitative position of opposition to presentations of stability. An identity... It was... The quote that Violet used in that presentation we watched is literally at the very beginning of this book. Queer is the the qualitative position of opposition to presentations of stability. That is what queer is. I, and, and people need to remember this. Queer is not about being gay. Queer is not about being trans. Queer is a far left political ideology. That's not that's not the way this works, bro. You got to listen. These these things have meaning. They just don't have your meaning. But the meaning that these people have is very, very consistent. Queer is the qualitative position of opposition to presentations of stability. That means queer is about going what against whatever is considered to be normal. And they're doing that specifically to undermine capitalism, which they define as private property ownership that problematizes the manageable limits of identity. Queer is a territory of tension defined against the dominant narrative of white, hetero, monogamous patriarch. Okay, sorry, Nuruto, I didn't see another super chat come through. On Twitter today, I've heard a wide variety of opinions on O.J. Simpson's death from good riddance to his acquittal was justified. I don't have an opinion on O.J. Simpson. I'm sorry, I don't have an opinion on it. I, I'm i going to take the very controversial opinion of I don't care. But I appreciate the super chat. Thank you. But also by in infinity with all who marginalized, authorized, and oppressed. Queer is the abnormal, the strange, the dangerous. Queer involves mm -hmm. our sexuality and our gender, but so much more. It is our desire and fantasies, and more still, queer is the cohesion of everything in conflict with the heterosexual capitalist world. Queer is a total oh, rejection oh, of the regime. Oh, what was that? What was that? Queer is the cohesion of everything in conflict with the heterosexual capitalist world. But I thought queer was a Gnostic sex cult. According to James Lindsay and Logan Lansing in their book that they just published, that James Lindsay went all over conservative media to talk about, they, they swore that queer was a Gnostic sex cult. In fact, Logan Lansing bragged pr proudly on Twitter that when they were talking about queer in their book, they didn't even use the word capitalism because Logan Lansing is convinced, along with James Lindsay, that queer has nothing to do with capitalism. 
They promised, guys. They pinky sweared. They said pinky swear. Trust us, bro. No, it's not a sexual orientation. They literally just told you that. Open your ears. Listen. Stop making shit up, bro. If you make shit up, you're no different than Logan Lansing and James Lindsay. Stop making shit up and listen to what they're telling you. Again, one more time. But so much more. It is our desire and fantasies. In fact, in fact, what did they just say there? Queer involves our sexuality and our gender, but it is so much more. They're literally saying it to you. This is not just about like, I mean, maybe being gay and trans can be like a part of it for some people. Although you don't need to be gay or trans to be queer. You can be a straight, cis, white man and still be queer. Again, listen. Marginalized, authorized, and oppressed. Queer is the abnormal, the strange, the dangerous. Queer involves our sexuality and our gender, but so much more. It is Queer involves our sexuality and our gender, and so much more. Yes, you can be queer and have sex with women. They're literally telling you this, bro. Anyone who has said otherwise is lying to you. But now, listen to what they're going to say next, because this is actually the most important part. This is our desire and fantasies, and more still, queer is the cohesion of everything in conflict with the heterosexual capitalist world. Queer is the cohesion of everything that is in conflict with the heterosexual capitalist world one more time vision of everything Hang on. I'm gonna go back a little bit further these and more still queer is the cohesion of everything in conflict with the heterosexual capitalist world queer is the cohesion of everything that is in conflict with the heterosexual capitalist world. Because the goal of queer Marxism is not to groom children. The goal of queer Marxism is not a Gnostic sex cult. The goal of queer Marxism is to abolish the gender binary and abolish the nuclear family as an attack on the heterosexual, normative, capitalist world. That is what their target is. The capitalist world. Capitalism is defined as private property ownership. Private property includes your ability to own a home, your ability to own land, your intellectual property, your business, your ability to own a rental unit that you rent out as a landlord, your parental rights, and your individual liberties. That's what they're talking about when they say capitalist world. These are all things that uphold American values. That is what they are attacking. It is not about being gay. It is not about being trans. It is about going against everything that upholds the normative, the norm, in a capitalist world. The reason that they are using this to push back on the heterosexual capitalist world is they cannot have their Marxist utopia until they abolish capitalism, which is specifically defined as private property. And you really have to wrap your head around the fact that this is about private property. In the Marxist utopia, built on equity, there will be no private 
property. That's because everyone will have access to all resources. And this is the danger when James Lindsay and Logan Lansing and the other conservative shills write books and go on podcasts and they say, it's a Gnostic sex cult. Because what they're doing when they're doing that is overlooking the fact that the queer Marxists, they're coming for your kids, but they're not coming to groom them into a Gnostic sex cult. It has nothing to do with sex at all. It has absolutely nothing to do with sex at all. It has to do with taking away parental rights because they consider parental rights to be a form of private property to abolish the nuclear biological family because they believe that the nuclear family upholds capitalism, private property ownership, through social reproduction theory, which says that social systems will reproduce themselves until those systems are disrupted. Does everyone understand that? Does everyone understand that this is not about being gay? This is not about being trans. This is about attacking the gender binary. The gender binary is men and women. They want to get rid of all that. Because they believe capitalism created the gender binary, which put men in the workplace, women in the home, doing the unpaid labor of raising the nuclear family. And they're also using it as an attack directly on the nuclear family because they believe the nuclear family upholds capitalism through social reproduction theory. Does everyone understand? Rottweiler says, this is how queer rooted in postmodernism that's why Bolsheviks don't like them. Postmodernism started as a critique of economic Marxism failing. Thank you, Rottweiler. Let's just listen to that again. And if anyone has questions, please feel free to chat in. Queer is the abnormal, the strange, the dangerous. Queer involves our sexuality and our gender, but so much more. It is our desire and fantasies, and more still, queer is the cohesion of everything in conflict with the heterosexual capitalist world. Queer. Tayton says, oh, wrong one. <clears throat> Tayton says, BLM is the same as well, right? It's not about being black. It's about abolition. Well, abolition, in the case of BLM, abolition means abolition of the prison industrial complex, which they also believe upholds capitalism. They believe the police are managers of private property. We've been over that before. But when, when socialists say abolition, typically they're talking about abolishing prisons and abolishing the prison industrial complex. But sometimes contextually if they're not if if the focus of whatever talk they're giving is not about prisons specifically they're using abolition more generally to mean capitalism but remember the police are a representation of capitalism the prison industrial complex is a representation of capitalism it's just a very specific type of abolition and blm is more focused on the abolition of the police and the prison industrial complex however blm is also focused on abolishing the nuclear family that's another form of abolition for them blm wants to abolish capitalism this is all in their blm in schools manual which i reviewed on the substack not too long ago so people can go and see that Bro, if you're going to be here ranting and raving about how we're fucking Nazis, get the fuck out. This is completely unproductive. You are like, you're like an old man shouting at the sky, not even listening to what's going on. This is your last warning. If you keep whining and complaining in my chat, when we are trying to listen to this and trying to be productive, we're just going to remove you. So either you're here to listen or you're here to act like a raving lunatic. No one here is a Nazi. That's ridiculous. E everyone is calling me a Nazi. Who's calling me a Nazi? Who specifically is calling me a Nazi? 
I want names. I want names and receipts. Who specifically is calling me a Nazi? That's so ridiculous. Rottweiler says, we're trained Marxists. Patrice Cullors, founders of BLM. Yeah, they were Marxists. Exactly, Rottweiler. Thank you. All right, we're moving on from this now. It is a total rejection of the regime of the normal. Chapter 2. As queers, we understand normalcy. Normal is the tyranny of our condition reproduced in all of our relationships. Normalcy is violently reiterated in every minute of every day. We understand this normalcy as the totality, the totality being the interconnection and overlapping of all oppression and misery. The totality is the state. It is capitalism. It is civilization and empire. The totality... The totality is the state. It is capitalism. It is civilization and empire. No, I don't think I will. And now you're going to stop disrupting my chat or you're like, bro, I have warned you more than I've ever warned anyone. Stop fucking disrupting my chat. We are here to learn and to listen, not here to deal with people like you who are raving about nothing. The is fence post crucifixion. It is rape and murder at the hands of police. It is, quote, straight acting, unquote, and, quote, no fatties or, f- or femmes, unquote. <laughs> It is queer eye for the straight guy. It is the brutal lessons taught to those who can't achieve normal. It is every way we've limited ourselves or learn to hate our bodies. We understand normalcy all too well. Chapter 3. When we speak of social war, we do so because purist class analysis is not enough for us. What does a Marxist economic worldview mean to a survivor of bashing, to a sex worker, to a homeless teenage runaway? How can class analysis alone, as paradigm for a revolution, promise liberation to those of us journeying beyond our assigned genders and sexualities? The proletariat, as revolutionary subject, marginalizes all whose lives don't fit in the model of heterosexual worker. Lenin and Marx have never fucked the ways we have. We need something a bit more thorough, something equipped to come with teeth gnashing to all the intricacies of our misery. Simply put, we want to make ruins of domination in all of its varied and inter- lacing forms. This struggle inhabiting every social relationship is what we know as social war. It is both the process and the condition of a conflict with this totality. Chapter 4. In the discourse of queer, we are talking about a space of struggle against this totality, against normalcy, by, quote, queer, unquote, We mean, quote, social war, unquote. And when we speak of queer as a conflict with all domination, we mean it. Chapter 5. See, we've always been the other, the alien, the criminal. The story of queers in this civilization has always been the narrative of the sexual deviant, the constitutional psychopathic inferior, the traitor, the freak, the moral imbecile, We've been excluded at the border from labor, from familial ties. We've been for- We've been excluded at the border from labor. That's the reference to capitalism. They're saying essentially the evil normative capitalist system is oppressing us because we're different. We're outside the bounds of what's considered normal. And so we are excluded from the border of labor. Worst into concentration camps, into sex slavery, into prisons. The normal, the straight, the American family has always constructed itself 
in opposition to the queer. Straight is not queer. The American family has always constructed itself. Look at this. The American family has always constructed itself in opposition to the queer. That's the reference to abolishing the nuclear family. Queer is in opposition to the nuclear family. Because socialists believe that the nuclear family upholds capitalism through social reproduction theory, the nuclear family is the literal means of production of capitalism. Queer is the alternative to the nuclear family. No, he's not. No, 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 no. There is a thing called homonormativity. Homonormativity is gay people who get married and they buy a house and they have 2.5 kids and a dog and they go to work just like normal, like just like the straights. Queer Marxists do not like gay people who just get married and have kids and settle down and assimilate to like normal society any more than they like straight people. Now, that may have been, this was written a while ago. And so, so it might, they, they might not have, have invented that term yet. But since this was written, I think, before gay marriage was legalized, but since gay marriage is now legalized, a lot of gay people have just been like, we just wanted to get married. That's like all we really wanted. We're good. And so queer Marxists refer to those people as homonormative and they don't like them either. So this is not just about being heterosexual. Maybe it was before gay marriage was legalized, but it's not anymore. People really need to understand that. Well, I wouldn't say they're homophobes, but they they do not like it when gay people assimilate to what they consider to be heterosexual normativity. So the term homonormativity is like a slur. It's like an insult. Exactly, Joseph. Queer is against homonormative. Let's listen again. Forced into concentration camps, into sex slavery, into prisons, the normal, the straight, the American family has always constructed itself in opposition to the queer. Straight is not queer. White is not of color. Healthy does not have HIV. Man is not woman. The discourses of heterosexuality, whiteness, and capitalism <gasps> reproduce themselves into a model of power for the rest of... What was that? My two favorite words? said side by side whiteness and capitalism not woman the discourses of heterosexuality whiteness and capitalism reproduce themselves into a model of power for the rest of us there is death in his work jean genet asserts that the life of a queer is one of exile that all of the totality of this world is constructed to marginalize and exploit us. He posits the queer as the criminal. He glorifies homosexuality and criminality as the most beautiful and lovely forms of conflict with the bourgeois world. He writes of the secret worlds when of rebellion and joy inhabited by criminals and queers. Quoth Genet. One, Jean Genet was a queer, criminal, vagabond who spent his early life traveling around Europe, leaving a trail of sordid affairs in his wake. He was sentenced to life in prison after nearly a dozen arrests for theft, prostitution, vagrancy, and lewd behavior. While in prison, he took up writing and inspired Sarté and Picasso to petition the French government for his release. After his release, he was drafted into the military, only to be released for fucking fellow soldiers. The remainder of his life was marked by flirt flirtati flirtations with various revolutionaries, philosophers, uprisings, and intifadas. Genet's life is a beautiful Antipodas? example of revolutionary criminal What's queer an decadence. Two, 
quote, homosexuality, unquote, used only as Genet uses it. When speaking of queers, we mean infinitely more, quote, excluded by again. my birth and tastes. They just they just said it again. They just said it again. Queer is so much more than just being gay. And remember, this was written a while ago. The social order, I was not aware of its diversity. That uh, nothing in the world was irrelevant. The stars on a general's sleeve, the stock market quotations, the, ol the olive harvest, the style of the judiciary, the wheat exchange, flower beds, nothing this order fearful and forced, whose details were all interrelated, had a meaning, my exile, unquote. Chapter 6. A fag is bashed because his gender presentation is far too femme. A, a poor trans man can't afford his life-saving hormones. A sex worker is murdered by their client. A genderqueer person is raped because z just needed to be, quote, fucked straight, unquote. Four black lesbians are sent to prison for daring to defend themselves against a straight male attacker. Cops beat us on the streets and our bodies are being destroyed by pharmaceutical companies because we can't give them a dime. Queers experience directly with our bodies the violence and domination of this world. Class, race, gender, sexuality, ability, while often these interrelated and overlapping categories of oppression are lost to abstraction, queers are forced to physically understand each. We've had our bodies and desires stolen from us. What are you very confused about, Phil? You need to ask a specific question. What are you confused about? What is confusing? We'll wait a second. Guys, while we're waiting for Phil to tell us what he's confused about, please make sure you mount the like button for me. Again, I do stream Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Normally tomorrow I'm starting at 2 p.m. because it's my birthday. But please make sure you mount the like button for me. Please make sure you are subscribed on YouTube or on Rumble or you're following me on Twitter, wherever you happen to be watching this. I really appreciate it. There is a shocking disparity between the number of people watching on YouTube right now and the number of people who have mounted the like button. Yeah, but Phil, this isn't a question. So you're older and that's fine. So a lot of, like a lot of this stuff has happened since you graduated from high school. So you need to be specific in like what we're trying to help you, bro. We're trying to help you like understand what you're seeing. So let us know what's confusing and what you have questions about. Because if you have questions, probably other people watching have questions as well. So there's no shame in it or anything. We want to make sure you understand. Look, Beth, Beth graduated high school then too. You're not the only one. Let us know how we can help. Well, this isn't supposed to be an introduction. This is not designed to be an guys. If you want an introduction, what you, if you want an introduction? Here's what you do. I have an introduction for you, but I can't do an introduction every day. So here's what you do. You go over to my Substack, Carlin K A R L Y N dot Substack dot com, and you go to How to Speak Socialist. And at the very top, the very first post, you're gonna see. The on-demand class for my level one, how to speak socialist. This is your introduction. Okay. So if you're new to my content and you're expecting me, I, I, I'm not going to be doing a, a review of everything all the time because we go really quickly and we have a lot of stuff to watch. But if you're relatively new, you've got a couple of options. One, you can just sit and listen. Sitting and listening is fine. Like we all started with this somewhere. And I honestly think that immersion is is the best way to learn this stuff but if you don't want to just sit and listen go and take this class that i put together which is a collection of clips 
from these trainings all put together in one nice little package so you can get a lot of it at a single time period and really bring you up to speed quickly. But immersion is like one of the best ways to learn this stuff. It's like it's like if you don't know how to speak French and you just say, I'm going to move to France for six months. You might not know how to speak French when you arrive in France, but you will know how to speak French when you leave France because you've immersed yourself in the language. It's the same thing here. So I apologize if people find this too advanced, but this is where we are today. mutilated and sold back to us as a model of living we can never embody. Foucault says that, quote, Foucault, power must be understood in Foucault, the first instance Foucault. as the multiplicity of force relations eminent, eminent in the sphere in which they operate. Three, see the New Jersey. Four, and let's free everyone else while we're at it and which constitute their own organization as the processes which, through ceaseless struggle and confrontations, transforms, strengthens, or reverses them as the support which these force relations find in one another, thus forming a chain or system, or on the contrary, the disjunctions and contradictions which isolate them from one another. And lastly, as the strategies in which they take effect, whose general design or institutional crystallization is embodied in the state apparatus, in the formulation of the law, in the various social hegemonies, unquote. We experience the complexity of domination and social control amplified through heterosexuality. When police kill us, we want them dead in turn. When prisons entrap our bodies and rape us because our genders aren't similarly contained, of course we want fire to them all. When borders are erected to construct a national identity, absent of people of color and queers, we see only one solution, every nation and border reduced to rubble. Chapter 7 Every nation and border reduced to rubble. As a reminder, socialists do not want borders to exist. They don't want countries to exist. They believe that borders are a form of private property. The perspective of queers within the heteronormative world is a lens through which we can critique and attack the apparatus of capitalism. Oh! We can analyze the ways oh! in which medicine... I'm sorry. What? What? Hang on, we're going to go back to that in a second. When was this written? I don't know exactly when this was written. Let me see. I'm looking at their Amazon page. When was this written? It doesn't say. I don't know. If someone wants to do a little bit of Googling and find out when Towards, uh, towards the Queerest Insurrection was written. from Okay, 2014. Okay, so 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 I was right then. This was written before gay marriage was legalized. That's why that's why they're focusing so much on like heterosexuality, heterosexuality, heterosexuality. When gay marriage was legalized, things changed because a lot of gay people literally just wanted to be able to get married. Right? And so when they had the ability to get married and they could have insurance benefits and they could visit each other in the hospital and stuff like that, they were like, okay, we're good. We don't need anything else. We have equal now. And that was enough for them. So that's why it's referencing heterosexuality because after that, things changed. But let's go back and listen to this part where they're saying that where they said the bit about capitalism. Hang on, let's listen to this again. Seven, the perspective of queers within the heteronormative world is a lens through which we can critique and attack the apparatus of capitalism. The perspective of queers in a heteronormative world 
is a lens through which we can critique and attack the apparatus of capitalism. Does anyone see it saying Gnostic sex cult? No. It is a lens through which they can critique and attack the apparatus of capitalism, which means private property ownership. One more time, just for fun. Perspective of queers within the heteronormative world is a lens through which we can critique and attack the apparatus of capitalism. Mm. We can analyze the ways in which medicine, the prison system, the church, the state, marriage, the media, borders, the military and police are used to control and destroy us. More important, all of those elements that they just named are elements that uphold capitalism, that they want to decolonize decolonize is about removing the oppressive force of capitalism in order to in order to queer all of society and usher in their marxist utopia we can use these cases to articulate a cohesive criticism of every way that we are alienated and dominated cooper's donuts was an all-night donut shop on a seedy street a seedy stretch of Main Street in Los Angeles. It was a regular hangout for street queens and queer hustlers at all hours of the night. Police harassment was a regular fixture of the Coopers, but one May night in 1959, the queers fought back. What started with customers throwing donuts at the police escalated into full-on street fighting. In the ensuing chaos, I want to throw all of the donut-wielding the rebels escaped into That's the night. That's actually awesome. Queer is a position from which to attack the normative more, a position from which to understand and attack the ways in which normal is reproduced and reiterated. The ways in which normal is reproduced or reiterated is a reference to the nuclear family. In destabilizing and problematizing normalcy, we can destabilize and become a problem for the totality. The history of organized queers was born out of this position. The most marginalized trans folk, people of color, sex workers, have always been the catalysts for riotous experiences Explosions of queer resistance. These explosions have been coupled with a radical analysis, wholeheartedly asserting that the liberation for queer people is intrinsically tied to the annihilation of capitalism and the state. Yo! It is no wonder, then. The liberation of queer people is inherently what did it say inherently target inherently tied is intrinsically tied to the annihilation of capitalism and the state hello again thing that the liberation for queer people is intrinsically tied to the annihilation of capitalism and the state. It is no wonder, then, that the first people to publicly speak of sexual liberation in this country were anarchists, or that those in the last century who struggled for queer liberation also simultaneously struggled against capitalism, racism, and patriarchy, oh. and empire. Wow. Capitalism, racism, patriarchy, and empire. Four words that all mean the same thing. All of those words are references to capitalism, which is defined as private property ownership. All four of those words mean private property. They mean different aspects of it. 
Carlin, why do they need four words to say capitalism when they could just say capitalism? Because they're attacking different aspects of capitalism. Capitalism, says gen said generally, is a reference to just private property ownership. We've already gone over this, but I'll repeat. Private property means your ability to own a home, your ability to own a business, your ability to own land, your ability to own intellectual property. It means your ability to own an apartment rental as like a landlord or an Airbnb or something like that. It means your parental rights and it means your individual liberties. All of those things are considered to be private property under capitalism. Racism is a reference to whiteness, which means systemic racism. Systemic racism is... Is, is what they're talking about every time they say racism, every time they say whiteness, every time they say white supremacy, because what they believe is capitalism, which is defined as private property ownership, created slavery in the United States. Slavery is the ownership of people as private property. That's what they're referencing. Slavery, the ownership of people as private property, created systemic racism. In 2020, they changed the dictionary definition of racism to include systemic or institutional racism. What they're referring to is not your skin color. It's the system. The system that upholds racism. The institution that upholds racism. The system or the institution is capitalism, private property ownership, because that is the origin point of all of this. They believe that you can only fix racism in this country by overthrowing and abolishing capitalism and replacing it with equity. Equity means Marxism. The patriarchy is a reference to the gender binary. The gender, what socialists believe is the gender binary, men and women, was created by capitalism. Capitalism put men in the working world where they had all the power and all the money. It put women in the home doing the unpaid labor of raising the future generation of proletarian worker, the nuclear family. That's what the patriarchy is. An empire is a reference to imperialism, colonization, colonialism, which is the taking of indigenous land and privatizing it under the oppressive force of capitalism. And they all mean, they all mean slightly different things. But for our purposes here, the general definition is good enough, which is indigenous people had a bunch of land the evil capitalist oppressors came in and took the land and privatized it under the oppressive form of capitalism. So all four of those words, capitalism, racism, patriarchy, empire, they all mean private property, guys. If you go to the root of any of those words in this context, when we're talking about the far left, Every single one of them means private property ownership. It's just a different aspect of private property ownership. Does everyone understand that? I just want to do a quick pause and we're going to listen again. Does everyone here understand what I just explained? If you have questions, it's perfectly okay to ask questions. I want you to ask questions. But if you don't ask questions, I'm, I'm going to assume that you understand, okay? Cool. Looks like everyone understands. Let's go back and listen again. Century, who struggled for queer liberation, also simultaneously struggled against capitalism, racism, and patriarchy, and empire. This is our history. Chapter 8. If history proves anything, it is that capitalism has a treacherous, recuperative tendency to oh. pacify radical social movements. It works rather simply, actually. A group gains privilege and power within a movement. And short Can someone do me a favor really quick? Can someone go to new discourses 
either the website or the YouTube channel? And can someone look up if James Lindsay has ever talked about the Mary Nardini gang? I'm going to bet that James Lindsay has not talked about the Mary Nardini gang. But I would like to know if James Lindsay has talked about the Mary Nardini gang. Because if he has, God fucking help James Lindsay if he has ever covered the Mary Nardini gang before. God help him. I'm going to bring wrath down upon James Lindsay. Like he has, he, James Lindsay thinks he's like, I'm annoying now with the whiteness is capitalism stuff. God help him if he has ever covered the Mary Nardini gang and he's still just ignoring it to shill a story. Okay. Bot says, no, there are no search results, which is also just irresponsible. By the way, I knew what the Mary Nardini gang was 10 months ago. I hadn't looked into it and done a deep dive into it. But I knew what it was and I knew what it referenced because we heard from Violet what it referenced. So I had some general sense of what the Mary Nardini gang said. None of this is actually surprising to me. Why do I know this and James Lindsay doesn't know this? Why does my audience know this and James Lindsay's audience doesn't know this? It's fucking irresponsible. He is being so goddamn irresponsible. Lady Harley over on Rumble. Thank you for the Rumble rant. Lady Harley says, you are the best teacher. Love the scoldings now and then. Never a fake smile. Well, you guys know that when I give you a compliment, you actually earned it. You guys know that when I tell you you got an answer right, you actually earned it. This is what meritocracy looks like, guys. If you do good, you get praise. If you get something wrong, you get told you're wrong. This is how it should work. Doesn't it feel better? Doesn't it, like, don't you feel like a sense of accomplishment when you get told, like, you get the right answer about something after maybe I've told you you're wrong several times in a row and finally you get it and something clicks and you start getting right answers and I go, good job, good job, gold star, gold star. Doesn't that feel good? Because you actually had to work for it. You actually had to accomplish something. You weren't just given an easy goddamn A. You got the A because you learned. You got the A because you did the work. This is what meritocracy looks like. Oh, Liz says this was actually printed earlier than 2014, 2008. Thank you, Liz, for that. See, even way before gay marriage was legalized. Shortly thereafter, sell their comrades out within a couple years of Stonewall. Affluent gay white males had thoroughly marginalized everyone that had made their movement possible and abandoned their revolution with them. It was once that to be queer was to be in direct conflict with the forces of control and domination. Now we are faced with a condition of utter stagnation and sterility. As always, capital recuperate capital recuperated brick throwing street queens into suited politicians and activists there are log cabin republicans and quote stonewall unquote refers to gay democrats there are gay energy drinks and a quote queer unquote television station that wages war on the minds bodies and esteem of impressionable youth the quote lgbt unquote political establishment has become a force of assimilation, gentrification, capital, and state power. Capital. Gay identity has become both a marketable commodity and a device of withdrawal from struggle against domination. Now they don't critique marriage, military, or the state. Rather, we have campaigns for queer assimilation into each. Their policies, their politics is advocacy for such grievous institutions rather than the annihilation of them all. Quote, gays can kill poor people around the world as well as straight people, unquote. Quote, gays can hold the reins of the state and capital as well, straight people, unquote. Quote, we are just like you, unquote. Assimilationists want nothing less 
than to construct the homosexual as normal, white monogamous, wealthy, 2.5 children, SUVs with a white picket fence. So that's what they call homonormative when gay people do it. Construction, of course, reproduces the stability of heterosexuality, whiteness, patriarchy, the gender binary, oh! and capitalism itself. Oh! <laughs> One weekend in August. Oh of- my God. Oh my God. This reproduces. Did I just accidentally mute that? This we reproduces the stability of heterosexuality, whiteness, the patriarchy, the gender binary, everything. Hang on, let's listen to that again. That was beautiful. Look at this. To construct the homosex this they're talking this is this is where fucking homonormativity comes from. Holy shit, I didn't catch that. They're talking they're literally talking about gay people assimilating to heterosexual capitalist norms. Listen again. This is where homonormative comes from. Straight people, unquote. Quote, gays can hold the reins of the state and capital as well, straight people. Unquote. Quote, we are just like you, unquote. Assimilationists want nothing less than to construct the homosexual as normal, white monogamous, wealthy, 2.5 2.5 children, SUVs with a white picket fence. This construction, of course, reproduces the stability of heterosexuality, whiteness, patriarchy, the gender binary, and capitalism itself. Ding. One weekend in August of 1966, Compton's, a 24-hour cafeteria in San Francisco's Tenderloin neighborhood was buzzing with its usual late night crowd of drag queens, hustlers, slummers, cruisers, runaway teens, and neighborhood regulars. The restaurant's management became annoyed by a noisy young crowd of queens at one table who seemed to be spending a lot of time without spending a lot of money, and it called the police to roust them. A Shirley police officer, accustomed to manhandling Compton's client clientele with impunity, Surly, grabbed not the arm Shirley. of one Surly. of the queens and tried to drag her away. She unexpected threw her coffee in his face. However, and a melee erupted. Plates, trays cups and silverware flew through the air at the startled police who ran outside and called for backup. The customers turned over the tables, smashed the plate glass windows, and poured into the streets. When the police reinforcements arrived, street fighting broke out all throughout the Compton's vicinity. Dry Queen's beat the police with their heavy purses and kicked them with their high-heeled shoes. A police car was vandalized, a newspaper box was burnt to the ground, and general havoc was raised all throughout the tenderloin. If we genuinely want to make ruins of this totality, we need to make a break. We don't need inclusion into marriage, the military, and the state. We need to end them. They were against no marriage. Gay politicians, they were against gay CEOs marriage. and cops. We need to swiftly Yo. and immediately articulate a wide gulf between the politics of assimilation and the struggle for liberation. We need to rediscover our righteous inheritance as queer anarchists. We need to destroy constructions of normalcy and create instead a position based in our alienation from this normalcy and one capable of dismantling it we must use- so they're creating an entire subculture around dismantling the capitalist system and this makes sense because we watched queer marxist trainings that were like 10 years after this where they were they were bragging about the fact that they embraced a queer lifestyle to push back against normativity you can go back and watch my um 
queer Marxism marathon episode that I did a socialism Saturday where we watch those. Use these positions to instigate breaks, not just from the assimilationist mainstream, but from capitalism itself. Oh, these positions Bing. can become tools of a social force ready to create a complete yeah, Tain, I think that might be fair, actually. With this world. I might, that, that Our might bodies fair. have been born into conflict with this social order. We need to deepen that conflict and make it spread. What began as an early morning raid on June 28, 1969, at New York's Stonewall Inn, escalated to four days of rioting Stonewall. throughout Greenwich Village. Police Greenwich. conducted the raid as usual targeting people of color, trans people, and gender variants for harassment and violence. It all changed, though, when a bulldike resisted her arrest and several street queens bulldog. began throwing <laughs> bottles and rocks at the police. Thank you, Tayton. The police not began Tayton, Reagan. beating folks, Jeez. but soon people from all over the neighborhood rushed to the scene swelling the rioters numbers to over 2000 the vastly outnumbered police barricaded themselves inside the bar while an uprooted parking meter was used as a battering ram for the crowd molotov cocktails were thrown at the bar riot police arrived on scene but were unable to regain control of the situation drag queens danced a conga line and sang songs amidst the street fighting to mock the inability of the police to reestablish order. The rioting continued until dawn, only to be picked up again at nightfall of the subsequent days. Chapter 9. Susan Stryker writes that the state acts to, quote, regulate bodies in ways both great and small by enmeshing them within norms and expectations that determine what kinds of lives are deemed livable or useful and by shutting down the space of possibility and imaginative transformation where people's lives begin to exceed and escape the state's use for them, unquote. We must create space wherein it is possible for desire to flourish this space, of course, requires conflict with this social order to desire in a world structured to confine desire is a tension we live daily. We must understand this tension so that we can become powerful th through it. We must understand it so that it can tear our confinement apart. On the night of May 21st, 1979, in what has come to be known as the White Night Riots, the, the queer White community of San Francisco was outraged and wanted justice for the murder of Harvey Milk. The outraged queers went to City Hall, where they smashed the windows and glass door of the building. The righteous crowd the riotous crowd took to the streets, disrupting traffic, smashing storefronts and car windows, disabling buses and setting 12 San Francisco police cruisers on fire. The rioting spread throughout the city as others joined in on the fun. This terrain born in rupture must challenge oppression in its entirety. This of course means total negation of this world we must become bodies in revolt bodies we need to in revolt delve into bodies and indulge in power we can learn the strength of our bodies in struggle for space for our desires in desire we'll find the power to destroy not only what destroys us oh good fine bot thank you but also those who aspire to turn us into a gay mimicry of that which destroys us we must be in conflict with regimes of the normal 
This means to be at war with everything. If we desire a world without restraint, we must tear this one to the ground. We must live beyond measure and love and desire in ways most devastating. We must come to understand the feeling of social war. We can learn to be a threat. Peyton says, the stage two of how to speak Marxist is in this lesson. Did you say, yeah, yeah, th this is, this is like perfect. It's like, uh, it, it was, it, it's absolutely the, like, it, and this really is, like you said it earlier, Tayton, but this is like, this feels like the queer manifesto. So why hasn't James Lindsay and Logan Lansing, who literally wrote the book on what queer is, ever talked about this? Kind of like they're behaving irresponsibly. I hate to beat that dead horse, but. Gemini Rider, what percentage of people in the movement do you believe are true believers in the Marxist ideology versus just true? Okay, so here is the problem. Gemini Rider, I don't recognize you, so I think you're probably new. So welcome. I hope you stick around. Here is the problem. The conservative retards on Twitter, the people who are driving all of like the anti-woke information. The only people that they ever talk about are the useful idiots. Libs of TikTok only talks about the useful idiots. James Lindsay only talks about the useful idiots. Chris Rufo, I'm sorry, only talks about the useful idiots. All of the different pundits, Charlie Kirk only talks about the useful idiots. Dave Rubin only talks about the useful idiots. Douglas Murray only talks about the useful idiots. On my channel, we don't talk about the useful idiots. We talk about the actual activists who are driving this ideology. Every once in a while, we'll watch the useful idiots just for fun and for like a little bit of a break. But we're sure to identify these are the useful idiots. These are several steps down from who we're talking about. So who are the actual activists? The people that you've never heard of. And we've been cataloging them for years. And so my position is there are a lot more real, true believer, radical revolutionary socialists than people think because no one ever talks about them and no one ever looks at what they're doing except for us. And, and Trevor Loudon does too. Andy No does too. I shouldn't say it's just us because Trevor Loudon does an incomparable job. Andy No does an incomparable job. But there are not many people that are actually looking at this. Based on the research that we've done when we've been going down rabbit holes and populating my Unwoke Wiki project that we're working on, there are thousands of collectivist groups, radical, revolutionary, left collectivist groups all over the country that you have never heard of on conservative media or in the anti-woke space. There's a lot more of these people than people think. And if the only people that are ever being looked at by the general public are on libs of TikTok, everyone is missing what is actually going on. This is why I'm screaming about the fecklessness of conservative influencers, because they are covering the completely wrong thing if they actually want to solve the problem. The problem is they don't actually want to solve the problem, which is why they keep covering the useful idiots instead of the true believers. I know that's not a direct answer to your question, but that's the answer that I have right now, and I do appreciate you asking it. We can become the queerest of insurrections. Chapter 10. To be clear, we've despaired that we could never be as well-dressed or cultured as the Fab Five. We found nothing in Brokeback Mountain. We've spent far too long shuffling through hallways with heads hung low. We don't give a shit about marriage or the military. But oh, we've had the hottest sex everywhere in all the ways we aren't supposed to. And the other boys at school definitely can't know about it. In 1970, Stonewall veterans Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Ri Rivera founded Star Street. Transvestite Action Revolutionaries. They opened the Star House 
a radical version of the, quote, house, unquote, culture of Black and Latina queer communities. The house provided a safe and free place for queer and trans street kids to stay. Marsha and the Sylvia, sex called as guys. the, quote, we house mothers, unquote, okay. hustled to pay rent so that the kids would not be forced to. Their, quote, children, unquote, scavenged oh, and stole seriously. food so that everyone... Seriously, in the-, the only Gnostic sex cult that we found is two queer people who got a bunch of homeless kids into a house and then the adults went out to do the sex work so that the kids didn't have to do it. Did you guys just catch that? This is the Gnostic sex cult that James Lindsay's talking about. It was literally a house for homeless kids that were doing sex work on the street where these adults got the kids into the house and then removed them from the sex work and the adults went out and did the sex work in order to pay the rent. Are you kidding me? Listen to this again. Black and Latina queer communities. The house provided a safe and free place for queer and trans street kids to stay. Marsha and Sylvia, as the, quote, house mothers, unquote, hustled to pay rent so that the kids would not be forced to. The house mothers hustled to pay the rent, engaged in sex work to pay the rent, so that the kids, the homeless queer kids that they got off the streets into this house, didn't have to do it. No, James does not get a point for this. The whole point of this house was to get the kids out of sex work. James doesn't get a point for that. This is the opposite of what James is saying is happening. Their, quote, children, unquote, scavenged and stole food so that everyone in the house could eat. That's what we call mutual aid. In the time between the Stonewall riots and the outbreak of HIV, the queer community of New York saw the rise of a culture of public sex. Queers had orgies in squatted buildings in abandoned semi-trucks, on the piers and in bars and clubs all along Christopher Street. This is our idea of voluntary association of free individuals. Many mark this as the most sexually liberated time this country has ever seen, though the authors of this zine wholeheartedly believe we can outdo them. And when... I was 16, a would-be bully Zine or pushed socialist me propaganda. and called me a faggot. I hit him in the mouth. The intercourse of my first and his face was far sexier this. and more liberating than anything MTV ever offered our generation. With the pre-come of desire on my lips, I knew from then on that I was an anarchist. In short, this world has never been enough for us. With the pre-cum of desire on my lips, I knew from then on that I was an anarchist. I actually kind of like that writing. I do. We got about a minute left of this, guys. Let's wrap up. We say to it, quote, we want everything, motherfucker. Try to stop us, unquote. And that's the end of the audiobook. Once again, All right, we didn't even have a minute. We had a couple more seconds. Wow. That was awesome. I'm so glad. Stony Baloney, Human Centipede, Sto- like, we salute you, bro. We salute you for bringing this to my attention. We found the queer manifesto and there was no mention of a Gnostic sex cult. It was all about destroying capitalism, abolishing capitalism, not assimilating to normativity, the patriarchy, the gender binary, et cetera, et cetera, whiteness, racism. It was it was everything. Exactly. Final count. Capitalism, nine mentions. Gnostic sex cult, zero mentions. We found the... uh the communist the communist manifesto that was something what a great episode 
All right, guys. Well, I'm going to wrap it there. There's other Mary Nardini gang stuff that we can listen to, and we probably should if we're honest about it. But I want to go chat with Adam King because I'm going to be having a chat with Adam King. Adam King is on uh, InfoWars platform, Band. Is it Band.video or Band.tv? See Info's Wars one. I don't really know which one it is. I'm sorry. I, sh- I-, I do a horrible job of introing these things. But we're going to be on Adam's uh, Rumble channel and we're going to be on his, uh, his, his X account. So let me again put the Rumble link in the chat. And I know he's setting up right now. And we're gonna have we're gonna have we're gonna have a chat. We're gonna have a chat. All right. We're gonna have a chat. And I think it's gonna be fun. And I'm looking forward to it. So guys, I will be back tomorrow for the Nitwits birthday extravaganza. I hope you all have your super chats ready. I hope <laughs> we're gonna do an epic marathon of me ragging on shill grifting influencers i'm gonna start at 2 p.m 2 p.m eastern time 2 p.m prior to that i'm gonna go to the beer store i'm gonna get some good beer and we're just gonna hang out and we're going to enjoy the day all right so mount the like button for me make sure you're subscribed to the channel and come back tomorrow for my birthday drama stream it's gonna be awesome all right guys i will see you soon uh take care and uh Yeah, we'll be back real soon. Bye, guys. Have a good one.